in your past lesson, you've learned the four laws of radicals. If you find it a little bit confusing, you can watch the lesson video about it on the link below. And if you don't, then today we're going to learn how to derive the loss of radicals of the index to the lowest possible order. I am your teacher, Joseph Ganoy, all the way from Malamote High School of Barangay Malamote, Kabakan, Cotabato. And this is Mathematics 9, Loss of Radicals. To start our lesson, I have here a series of radical expressions with its corresponding simplified form. Pause the video and try to observe what happened to the index of each radical expression. As what you see, the index of each radical expression has been reduced. On radical expression A, from 20th root, it was been reduced to 4th root. Expression B, from 6th root, it was been reduced to square root. Expression C, same as in expression A. And expression D, it was reduced from 10th root to square root. There are actually two ways to simplify this type of radical expression. We can use the property m root of n root of a equals 2 mn root of a equals 2, n root of m root of a. Here, you break down the index of the radical into two, which their indices are factors of the index of the given radical expression. Make sure that the index of the inner radical is greater than to the index of the outer radical. Let's have an example. To explain the property, I will use the expression 20th root of 32. This expression was used a while ago as our example. So it has a simplified form as 4th root of 2. Now I will show you a step-by-step -step method on how we could arrive to its simplified form which is 4th root of 2. So first thing we do is to factor 20. So we have or I can factor 20 as 4 times 5. So we have 4th root of 5th root of 32. Remember we only factor the index not the radicand. So after we have this expression we will now uh, express our radicand into its exponential form. So the technique is that the exponent of our radicand should be equal to the number of the index. Okay, so we have here fifth root of 2 raised to 5. So as I mentioned, the exponent of, of our radicand should be equal to the index of the radical. So by this, we can cancel the exponent and the radical symbol or the index of the radical. And so we have here 4th root of 2. So we have now our answer. Okay, let's have the expression 6 root of 8 x raised to 9 y raised to 3. The simplified form of this expression is x square root of 2 x y. Okay. To simplify this expression, we will factor 6. So we can factor 6 as 2 times 3. So we have square root of cube root of 8 x raised to 9 y raised to 3. Next is to express this radicand into their exponential form. So we have square root of cube root of 2 raised to 3. As I mentioned on our first example, the exponent of the radicand should be 
equal to the index so that we could cancel them. So x can be expressed as, or x raised to 9 can be expressed as x cubed times x cubed times x cubed. Why? Because if you combine the three x's, you will arrive to its original form, which is x raised to 9. So we have here y raised to 3. y raised to 3 remain as y raised to 3 because the exponent is already 3. So, so next step is to cancel the exponents that is equal to the index. So we have square root of the first element, which is 2. Then there are three x's that, been, that has been cancelled. So we have x raised to 3 or x cubed and we have y. Okay, then our x raised to 3 can still be simplified because it is the exponent of our x is greater than to our index. So we have here, can express x cubed as 2x raised to 2 or x squared times x. Then we have here times y. Again, the exponent of our x here is 2, and the other one is 1. When you combine them, it will go back again to the, its original form, which is x. Now, since the exponent of this x is 2, we can cancel this 1 together with the index. So, it will come out to our radical expression, or in our radical symbol. So the remaining, our radical symbol, which is to the other x and we have y. So this is our final answer, x squared of 2, x, y. Let's have another expression, 20th root of 32, m raised to 15, n raised to 5. So the simplified form of this expression is 4th root of 2 m raised to 3 or m cubed n. Okay, to simplify this expression, again, we will factor 20. So I could, I could factor or we could factor 20 as 4 times 5. So we have 4th root of root of 32 and raised to 15 and 5. So next step is to express the radical into exponential form or into the exponential form wherein the exponent must be equal to the index. So we have 4th root of 5th root of uh, we have 2 raised to 5, m raised to 5 times m raised to 5 times m raised to 5. Then we have here n raised to 5. Again, n, the exponent of n is already equal to the index, so no need to do anything to our n raised to 5. So we have here for fourth root of we can cancel the exponent now together with the index of the inner radical so we have two then we have three m so we have m raised to three and m so our final answer will be fourth root of two m raised to three m Okay, for our last example, let's have the expression 10th root of 243 a raised to 5 b raised to 10. Okay, the simplified form of this expression is b square root of 3a. Okay, to simplify this expression, 
we will factor 10. So we could factor 10 as 2 times 5. So we have 2 or square root of 5th root of 243 a raised to 5 b raised to 10. Okay, the next step is to express the radicand into their exponential form and make sure the exponents of each expression must be equal to the index. So we have square root of fifth root of 3 raised to 5, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, that is 243. And then we have a raised to 5, then we have b raised to 5, then we have another b raised to 5. Again, if we combine these two, it will arrive to its original form, which is b raised to 10. Now, we have to cancel the exponents of the radicand. Then we have here 3, then a, then there are 2, b raised to 5. So we have b, b squared. Since the exponent of b is equal to the index, we could simplify it as b square root of 3a. This is our final answer. As I mentioned, there are two ways in simplifying this type of radical expression. The other way is using the property m root of a raised to n equals to a raised to n over m equals to m root of a raised to n. Here, you transform or express the radical into its rational exponential form. And then after that, you transform it again into radical expression. Let's have an example. Okay, to explain the property, we will use again the expression 20th root of 32. Okay, first thing you do is to express the radicand into its exponential form. So we have 20th root of 2 raised to 5. Then transform the whole expression into rational exponent form. So we have 2 raised to the exponent of our radicand will become the numerator of our fraction, then the index will become the denominator. So we have 2 raised to 5 over 20. Then after that, we will simplify this fraction into its lowest form. So we have 2 raised to 1 over 4. And after doing this, let's again explain press the whole expression into radical expression. So we have here, since the denominator is 4, so the index will become 4th root of 2 raised to 1. No need to write exponent 1 because it's understood if there is no number on the exponent, it is equal to 1. So this is our final answer. Let's have another example. We have 6th root of 8, x raised to 9, y raised to 3. The simplified form of this expression is x square root of 2xy. So first thing you do is to express this radicand into exponential form. So we have 6th root of 2 raised to 3, then x raised to 9, y raised to 3. Then, we will express this whole expression into rational exponent forms. So we have 2x, 2 raised to 3, x raised to 9, y raised to 3, raised to 1 over 6. So we have here a numerator 1 because the whole expression has been expressed into rational exponent form and we have 
the exponent of the expression as 1. So we have 1 here as numerator. And 6 as the denominator because the index is 6. Now, we will now distribute this exponent to each expression inside. So we have 2 raised to 3 over 6. Why 3 over 6? Because 3 times 1 over 6 is 3 over 6. And then we have x raised to 9 over 6. And lastly, we have y raised to 3 over 6. Next step is to simplify each fraction to its lowest term. So we have 2 raised to 1 half. Then we have x raised to 3 over 2. And we have y raised to 1 half. Equals. So after having this one, after simplifying the fraction, we will now again express this whole expression into radical form. So we have same denominator therefore the index is 2 or we could also write it as square root of 2 then we have x raised to 3 and y raised to 1 all the numerator will become exponents so 2 raised to 1 x raised to 3 and y raised to 1 then Again, the exponent of our x is greater than to the index, so still we can uh, simplify this x cubed as 2x squared times xy. So we can cancel that one, and the final answer will be x square root of 2xy. That's it. Let's apply what we've learned. I will show a radical expression and you will pause the video. Then, you need to simplify the expression as fast as you can. Ready? Pause the video. Now, Review and check your answers. For our assessment, I will flash five radical expressions. And what you need to do is to simplify or reduce each index to its lowest possible order. Okay, ready? Pause the video. To check your assessment, refer your answers on the screen. Now to summarize our lesson, we've discussed how to derive the loss of radicals of the index to the lowest possible order. We've also learned that there are two ways to simplify those type of radical expressions. We can use the property m of m to the a equals to m n to the a equals to n of m to the a. And we can also use the property m root of a raised to n equals to a raised to n over n equals to m root of a raised to n. If you find this lesson a little bit confusing, then you can always play back this video and try to practice until you master how to do it. And if you don't, otherwise, congratulations. Good job, Pat Leonard. That's it for today, and remember, Stay safe and stay curious.